えー、今日はね、今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今日は今えー、実はこの,あのアワイ・ギャザリング、あのー、初めてね。There are、uh, people who came here for the first time today. So we had this kind of gathering in、uh, Vano Equinox Day. And the theme we had is、uh, You know, a mixture of、uh, human and non human emerged from Hawaii. That was our theme. And、uh, a lot of people here、uh, met first and there or connected. And we didn't end that、uh, connection. So, this、uh, second event is、uh, to continue on that connection or relationship. えっと、一応ですね、あの日英、えー、今回もあの、so、have, uh, translation, interpretation, both English to Japanese and Japanese to English. もし、ジャパニーズスピーカーしゃべるタイミングとかで通訳聞きたいよという方はですね、ズームの右下の通訳機能。You can use an、uh, interpretation function. You can see the icon of the global icon. Which、uh, you pick and、uh, click, and、uh, you can pick the Japanese or English, whichever language you want to listen to. Please、uh, take advantage of that function. For English speakers,、um, thank you so much for、um, being here with us today. Now I'm Yasu from Ecological Me. And then、um, this is our gathering. Uh, it's a、uh, kind of casual gathering、uh, to keep our connections、uh, after the、uh, Ecological Meme Global Forum,、uh, which was held in, in March、uh, on the day of Spring Equinox. And under the theme of、uh, emergence from Hawaii, regenerating human non humans. And we cover a lot of uh, 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 realms and areas.、Uh, Uh, business,、um, ecology, and art, and beyond. And then、um, uh, this Hawaii gathering is、uh, kind of the gathering in order to、uh, keep on nurturing or deepening our connections to the forum and also in order to continue our journey of Hawaii,、uh, which is a Japanese ancient term uh, to. Uh, Describe、uh, space or in between、uh, that embraces、uh, kind of plurality or ambiguity、uh, beyond dualism. Uh, beyond dualism. So、um, I hope、uh, this gathering or kind of community will be the kind of、uh, this journey is going to be、uh, to redefine the way of living. Or the way of doing business, or designing society, or maybe like explore what it really means to be human on this planet、uh, in our time. And then、uh, uh, from the variety、uh, perspectives, or、uh, from the、uh, very cross disciplinary field. Hi. And, and then、um, this, for, uh, this gathering is going to be. Uh, both in English and Japanese. And then、um, you can use the、uh, uh, Zoom interpretation function. And uh, uh, you can find the tab at the bottom of the screen, Zoom screen. And then、uh, choose the language you want to、uh, listen.、Uh, so maybe English. And then uh, uh, the interpreters will uh, interpret uh, the Japanese conversation into English. And also,、uh, Uh, please feel free to、uh, call in、uh, or like speak out even in English、uh, in the situation when like Japanese speakers speak Japanese. So it's going to be like a, a chaos,、uh, ca- kind of like chaotic, but、uh, we are all、uh, kind of 
uh, welcome that kind of situation. So uh, please feel free to uh, speak out、um, in English or、well, Japanese, both in English and Japanese. And the chat, same.、Uh, so、uh, you can、um, write any like, comment or like, feeling or thoughts or any trouble, even trouble. Uh, on the chat, and then、um, uh, both、uh, in either in English or Japanese. Okay. はい。ということで、えっ、ー、と、日本語に戻して。Well, えー、so I will switch back to Japanese. で、えっ、ー、と、まあ、あの、フォーラムにご参加いただいたり、well, えー、the people who participate in the forum. いらっしゃるかもしれませんし、well, who already know about that or... Uh, there may be some people who came here for the first time.、えー、so it's totally okay you come here without、uh, participating in the forum. That's not the prerequisite, so don't worry about that. In the forum, we covered a very wide range of things from different、uh, disciplines. In the, In, by doing so, we saw the connection、uh, which seemingly totally separate、uh, disciplines. We see something in common. But in this gathering, we a、uh, little bit uh, uh, focus on the narrower range and、uh, go deeper. So today's topic is about Oriental、uh, philosophy. Toshihiko Izutsu. The theory of、uh, his thought about the Kukan and the Kachirinkan meditation. So we invited、uh, a monk,、uh, a house monk of the Koto, the Koya san temple. In the forum or in the last gathering, we experienced a, a lot of、uh, people. Excited about the Professor Iba's、uh, presentation about、uh, creativity or middle voice. So, you may find some connection uh, uh, to those themes in today's、uh, lecture. But don't worry,、uh, without having the experience of the forum, you'll be able to enjoy tonight. Hi. えー、ということでですね、えっ、ー、と、早速、あの、していければと。So, let's start. あえっ、ー、と、えー、あの、本当に、まあ、結構、ディープというか、あの、マニアックな。So, today's scene may be a little bit deep. And we invited、uh, here, we have about, about 70 people from Japan or outside Japan. And we're really excited to, to share this time with all of you. Well, so let me introduce today's guest. Mr. Kawashima. Kawashima san, are you there? Hi, this is Kawashima. Thank you very much for coming today. Mr. Kashima、uh, is a head monk of Kofukuin、uh, in the lineage of Koya san temple.、Uh, his temple is in Meguro in Tokyo. So,、uh, Iba sensei talked about the、uh, creation from、uh, selflessness. And there's a, a, a lot of things in selflessness. And、uh, we look into the perspective from、uh, esoteric Shingon Buddhism. And,、uh, some people might have, have heard about that before, and、uh, most people have never heard of that. And so many people know about、uh, uh, Dr. Ikujiro no Naka. He is famous for his theory of innovation. So, we are going to、uh, pick up those、uh, themes in this conversation. So, look at look things from the Buddhist point of view, Buddhism point of view. And we have a pleasure of having、uh, Professor Iba today. today. So, we will have a great time together. 
And also we will have uh, some meditation experience today that uh, will be led by uh, Kawashima-san. So please relax and enjoy. You know, when you hear about the philosophy, you may be a little bit tensed and uh, what is it? Frazzled. But uh, tonight, what we experience tonight is uh, require us to a little bit relax and uh, uh, let your uh, mind, mind free tonight. So please, Kawashima-san. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. And uh, people from Europe, uh, hello, you might be daytime. Thank you very much for being able to meet a lot of people today and a great opportunity for us. Ah, sorry, I need to say one more thing. So we are actually recording this session today. And uh, because we have an intention uh, to archive it. But if you don't want to take in your face uh, into the archive, uh, please turn off your camera. So if you don't mind your faces in the archive, please go ahead. Kawashima-san, sorry about that. OK, everyone. So great pleasure to meet you tonight. So I was introduced as a monk today. So I live in this uh, normal house. I uh, wear uh, T-shirts today. Doesn't look like a monk. The room I mean right now is uh, a room inside of the temple. Uh, uh, but I need to choose this room because of the internet connection. So let me share the uh, material with you. みなさん、画面出ましたでしょうか大丈夫はい、待ちに見えておりますはい、ありがとうございますじゃあ、これに沿ってお話をしてくださいはい、ありがとうございますじゃあ、これに沿ってお話をしてくださいはい、ありがと
uh, talked about the uh, egoless creation. And he also uh, pointed out the meditation. Meditation is the, you know, uh, how we can dive into the subconscious territory, how we can do that. And I think meditation is one of the way to lead us to get in touch with subconsciousness. And, uh, and uh, as you know, there's uh, different kinds of meditations and Christianity has meditation, Buddhism has a meditation. And there's a meditation uh, that belongs to religious uh, discipline. So I am a monk of esoteric Shingon. So I today I will introduce you so that you can experience uh, Shingon meditation. So I have some several angles to uh, introduce the uh, Iba Sensei's idea. One is uh, uh, Nonaka-san's innovation theory. This is about uh, how to manage company, business side. And then Iba-san's theory about uh, uh, egoless uh, creation. And my I introduced uh, Kukai's Shingon Buddhism. So those three angles we're going to deal with tonight. So the first, we like to experience actually what is meditation? Because it's open up a door for us to grapple with what we are going to grapple with tonight. So this is a, a picture of Kukai, born in uh, 774. And his Kukai, Ku means a sky, and Kai means a ocean. So he got his enlightenment by watching sky and ocean. And this is a picture of the, a cave of Muroto in Muroto Misaki. He, uh, Kukai, monk Kukai, master Kukai has a meditation here, did a sitting here. He was watching the first Venus and he experienced a Venus came into his mouth and he experienced he was one with universe. And uh, Master uh, Kukai uh, opened the uh, Kongo Buji in Koya Mountain. So this is a picture of that Kongo Buji temple. So this is a temple opened by Kukai. So we sometimes go there and being trained as a monk. And in this temple, there is a, a, a Ajikan a, a training hall. So this is an inside of Ajikan training hall. So a tourist and general people can experience meditation here. So there's only one person here in the picture. And he became a teacher. And uh, 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 that orange uh, robe guy is an uh, uh, instructor of the meditation. When I visited in Hong Kong, my role is uh, uh, be an instructor of meditation for tourists and uh, general people. So uh, we're going to introduce you the instruction in this hall tonight. So today's, um, today's meditation is called Gachi Rinkan in Japanese. And so we use moon. So those, this photo is uh, people doing uh, Gachi Rinkan Meso, full moon meditation. So they see the picture scroll of the moon. So tonight, we uh, cannot provide this uh, scroll for you. So we're gonna instead use this uh, photo of the picture. So this is a, you see the photo of the moon here. So moon is a kind of flat, picture is a flat. So the, usually we use a, a scroll which has a variable size moon 
you know, you started to imagine that. And the imagine that the flat picture moon become a, a three dimensions picture, like a variable. So it started to acquire depths in your imagination. And after that, you uh, absorb that picture, that valuable uh, shaped moon into your body. So that is a kind of outline of the full moon meditation. And sorry, I, you may be surprised. I may, I am surprised being surprised by watching my own slide. Yeah, I made this slide a little bit long ago, so that's oh, as soon as I open the new page, it reminds me of oh, oh. So these are four phases in the Aji uh, full moon meditation. The first phase is the as is Aja meditation in Buddhism. So first phase is to regulate your body. So first, uh, you uh, regulate or uh, peace, make peace with your body. And next is, uh, number two is a uh, breathing. So, so, it's, so first phase and the second phase is not clearly separated. So as you continue to uh, regulate your body, you start to regulate your breathes. And then you uh, add it, uh, regulate your mind. So this part, number three, regulating your mind will happen spontaneously. As you regulate your body, as you, at the same time as you regulate your breathe, your mind will be naturally adjust or regulated. That is a preparatory part. Then you see the moon picture and I imagine moon became a, a, not the circle, but it's a ball. So moon is uh, reflecting the light and uh, it has it's a little bit warm and you put it into your body. And uh, once you put it in your mind, you in your heart, you imagine your moon in your chest become bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. And the size can be varied, maybe, size of your room or size of your body. So you can continue uh, expand that and then and you make it shrink, make it smaller and it's returned to the original size. So if you you may have some difficulty in cannot imagine moon very well or cannot enlarge a moon. But don't worry about that. You just, this is a, okay. The way you do is perfect. And this is the first time. And uh, as it's not so uh, original, it's not so easy to get the deeper, deeper part of your mind. So don't worry about that. You know, monk practice this a uh, thousand times a year. And the more you do, you start to get the sense of that. So don't worry about that. You can do it well or not tonight. You just experience and uh, enjoy. Now, as I said, that you can start by aligning your body. As you see, on the first line, you can feel the weight of your upper body. When you sit on the chair, like me, we can tend to lean our back on the chair, back of the chair. And can you, can you touch your butt bones when you 
can you find the bones? When you stand up, it's easier to find your uh, butt bones. There is a sharp part of your uh, butt bones, both sides. And when you say these bones, that you feel that these bones are touching on the surface of the chair. Can you do that? Can you feel the, you know, kind of the feeling that bones are touching on the chair? And the upper body can be on the bone. And when you sit using like, you know, the flesh of the, the butt, and then you can not have the kind of strength straightening up, straight up your body. So if you feel these two bones on the butt, you can actually relax your upper body. And then, and as you see the scan of the spine, what does it mean is that you can pay attention to your own spinal spine. The spine is like a sacrum, starting from the sacrum, and it's, it's like a blocks by blocks, building up to create the spine. So when you support by butt bones, probably you can close your eyes. That is better for you to feel the body, the bones. So when you start scanning from the bottom of the butt bones and sacrum, and on the sacrum, there's a first block and second and one by one the spine is building up like that building one by one then the purpose of doing it is to straighten straighten up your body not going that way or not leaning side on the side you can straight up on um, your spinal spine and one by one slowly feel your body building up from the bottom going up to the middle and going up when I do it, it's easier for me to close my eyes. So if you want, please close your eyes in doing that. When I tell you, please feel buttons and do it, do it. Sometimes that you are trying so hard to do it, but I recommend you to relax your body, relax the epigastrum, like a solar plexus part. And this is how you uh, regulate or align your body. Let the body naturally find the best position, the best posture, the posture of your body. So this is how you can start repairing your body. That's the first step. And the next step is you don't need to care about the slides. You can keep closing your eyes and listening to my voice and then start meditating. I guide you by closing my own eyes as well. And now breathing. When you breathe, we inhale and exhale. However, 
when you start meditating, exhale first. So your upper body weight, feel the body bone, uh, butt bones, and feel your spines and solar plexus and whatever happens to you, you can use your nose and mouth. You can breathe in and breathe out. Start from breathe out, exhale and inhale. <laughs> Maybe you can mute yourself. Otherwise that you, everybody can hear your you exhale or inhale, you know, so, and exhale, keep exhaling, 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 and if you reach the limit, inhale. You don't need to try hard to inhale. It's just automatically, naturally, the air is coming into your body. So that's how our body is built. So let the body be naturally inhaling, exhaling, exhaling, exhaling. When you keep exhaling and you reach to the limit, let the body inhale naturally. Maybe you inhale a lot and then exhale, exhale, keep exhaling. Exhaling, and then you reach the limit and let the body inhale and repeat. Probably you can do it like three times on your own pace. You haven't finished three times, it's okay. Please do it on your own pace. And I told you, you can use nose and mouth, but you can do it only by your nose. Excel from your nose. Exhale, keep exhaling. And then if you reach the limit, you can automatically inhale from your nose and repeat. Exhale and inhale from your nose. で、これあの、よく聞かれることなんですけど、瞑想中に this question. You do it excelling, excelling, excelling that some people are bothered by the mountain mind. Of course, it's natural that they worry about your work. I say, was it okay or I getting hungry or all these things that we think of and it's really okay. Please keep uh, breathing in and breathe out while I'm talking on your own pace. So please keep doing the breathing. So um, it, despite you have all this mind, and then it's really natural that you have 
sort of thinking. The point is, whenever whatever comes in your mind, just let go. If you're hungry, or if you're hungry, that's all, and let go. And some people think that you are hungry, and uh, I had early lunch too early, so and I didn't have enough food, and I want to have like something like a cutlet or whatever. Mind is. Uh, and we tend to think so many things like related to the thought that uh, happening earlier. And it's like a chain reaction. So I mean, you have this thought, one thought, let go and breathe, breathe and breathe out one thought. And when you Excel from your nose and let go one mind and breathe in and breathe out and then the next mind let go. So one and after another you can just keep letting go your mind. And then let's do this breathing even deeper. And imagine if your breathing has a color, something pale, maybe white or pale gray. Or... And when you exhale from your nose, keep exhaling. Imagine the breath, exhale, the breath is going far away from your body. And one meter away or three meter away. Some people they imagine that it's ten meters away. And with a color, whatever color you can imagine, it's okay. And then going away and away, far away. And if it goes uh, so far away, naturally going back into your body and the. Uh, Imagine that uh, breath is coming back from the top of your head. And top of your head coming back and then going through the body all the way to go to the back and then going even lower and then going to the floor, going through the floor. And then again, exhale and then the breath is going Fall away from your body, three meters away, 10 meters away, and then coming back from top of your head. And going through your body all the way down to the butt with a pale color, and then from the butt, going out from your body one meter, ten meters, and ten meters, and then coming back again from the top of your head and going through and going down and then going again. So please do it like three times um, by yourself on your own pace.
なかなかの難しい面もあるかもしれませんけど、えー、Maybe some people feel find it difficult, but next step, we can count the breath. Exhale, keep exhaling, exhaling, and to the limit is you can count one and then going far away and then coming back to the top of your head and coming back. It's two, count two, and then exhale, keep exhaling again. That's three. And then coming back as you inhale, that's four. So let's go to six, like that. And in addition, when you, okay, let's, let's start from one exhaling. And when you think something that bothering you, in mind bothering, and then you cannot concentrate. And as soon as you have this monkey mind, that you forget about breathing. And if you stop, you have to start from one, from the beginning. Okay, so go back to one. So when you are away, from your breathing. So it's it's your challenge, starting from one to six. So let's begin on your own pace. だいぶあの皆さんの息も整ってきたんじゃないかというふうに思いますので。Maybe I can feel that your breath is aligned well enough to be prepared. So let's start the main meditation, the moon meditation. So can you imagine the moon? Like a sheet, like the size of a volleyball in front of you, as if you are have this moon, like a volleyball size in front of you. Of course, um, depending on your body size, uh, it cannot be like a size of the volleyball, but you can imagine that the moon is in front of the view. And the upper body, the weight of the body, make sure that it's on your back. Bones. Relax your solar plexus and exhale and inhale through your nose. Just keep doing. And as you keep doing, Image the moon just in front of you, 
and imagine this moon is coming into your body around the chest area keep breathing and now the moon there's a light very soft light on the moon and the warmth of the moon please feel feel it inside of your body and warm and with a deep breath as you breathing deeply and feel the moon inside of yourself relax and ease your ease yourself and feel the sensation now let's start making the moon bigger and bigger slowly on your own pace enlarging the moon probably start as if the moon is getting bigger just as big as your body with a deep breathing And when the moon is at your body size, try to enlarge, keep enlarging uh, as if the moon is big as your room. And the biggest the size of your room and after that if you want you can make it bigger even bigger than your room and when you put on your palms down face down sometimes you feel too much uh, sweat on your palms so i recommend that your palms upward face up and if you want to if your tongue can put um the root of your upper teeth so that you can relax more easily and keep enlarging the size of the moon it's totally up to you after it's it becomes the size of the of your room it, it can be the size of your house or your apartment or the city you're living or if you want to go farther please it's here it's up to you even bigger you don't need to use your mind it's using your breathing deep breathing as you breathe deeply breathe deeply you get large, you move and bigger and bigger.
ょっとしたらもう自分の町それを超えて You moon became the size of your city or the size of your country. It really depends on individual. So please remember to w o r k on your own pace. And if you. Feel that you reach the maximum size. Slowly stopping the image of enlarging your moon and stopping and stay there and be sure you keep breathing deeply and you feel. The sensation that you are in the moon. The moon is pretty big. Some people think that you are very small as a size of. Rice, or some people feel that you are you no longer you can see you that you are part of the moon, totally melted into the moon. Whatever the case, please enjoy the feeling, the sensation. そうしたらそろそろ小さく Now, it's time to swing the moon. A very big you know, sitting in the moon is pretty comfortable, but now it's time to make it smaller,、uh, slowly shrinking little by little.、Uh, your moon is getting. Small. ゆっくりで構いませんので、小さく小さく。Slowly. One more way and keep breathing deeply. Exhale far away. Some people have. The size of your city, or small as the size of your room, on your own pace, shrink and shrink on your own pace. And in the end, the, when we began, we put this moon in the body. So that's the goal that keep shrinking the moon. 
the size that you become when you started its in your body. And when you go back to your body, please once again feel the light and warmth of the moon in your body. How is it going? How is your moon? Have it come back to your body? Now, it's the end of uh, my meditation guide, but slowly, when you have this posture, you can start swinging slowly your upper body, uh, to side by side, or you know, rear and back, or rotate your body by a little stronger, little strongly, exhale a little strongly, or uh, maybe you can move your fingers and palms, or not to rotate your neck so fast. Just rotate the whole body, like upper body. When you sit down, the, sometimes that when you concentrate too much, you forget your lower body stop kind of uh, got, got numb. So when you, if you want to, you can stand up and also um, rotate or move your lower body as well. Uh, yes, I noticed that I was doing too much, too long, the, you know, the meditation, a little too long, the, longer than planned. Is it okay? <laughs> wow, it's fantastic. It's, it's already five past eight. <laughs> Our original plan was 20 minutes or something. <laughs> I did it more than 30 minutes, like meditation time that I took. How, how was it? Was it? Did you feel it was shorter than like 30 minutes, 40 minutes? So, uh, can I start talking about our theme? So, according to Iba Sensei's model, so our usual consciousness and uh, going into the deeper consciousness, one of the way to travel is meditation. There's a book called The Knowledge uh, uh, Creating Knowledge Creating Company. So Ikujiro no Naka is a theory of innovation. It says our knowledge is about uh, a tip of the iceberg. So we usually you know, only aware of the above the water level, that's uh, our consciousness. And uh, Professor Iba says last time that we dive into the deeper level of conscious and coming, uh, get something and back, then that creation happens. And uh, specific example introduced as a creation in this book is a home bakery. 
National uh, Panasonic, a uh, new name is Panasonic. We used to call it National. That's a home bakery uh, is uh, their product to bake a pan, bake a bread at home. This is a very popular uh, commodity. In the process of uh, creating this, inventing this was not easy. And the uh, engineer who is a female, I thought about, can you hear me? My internet is not so, uh, connection is not good. Yeah, we can hear you correct, clearly. So engineer, a uh, woman, went to the uh, bread maker to learn how to make a bread. And uh, she learned how to, how to make a bread from the real maestro, master of the bread. So she uh, worked as a bread maker. And that master bread maker is an actual master, but he couldn't explain really well how he does it, uh, how he did said it, it uh, because my body knows how to do it. And he cannot articulate that. So it's part of his body. So the engineer from Panasonic you know, uh, mimics the body movement of the Meister. And uh, from the, by moving the, her body, just like her Meister, bread Meister moves, she learned from her body. And uh, she can articulate that. She said, you did, you are doing this. And the Meister said, did I do that? So that's how to articulate, how to, uh, experience the knowledge and make it visible. And she made a, a, this machine and that's became very popular. So that is a, a anecdote of the development of this home bakery. And the next slide, uh, I uh, uh, borrow from uh, Professor Iba's presentation last time. The uh, Professor Iwa uh, referred to uh, Taro Nishida, the Japanese philosopher. And uh, usually the uh, caricature, this uh, animation caricature shows that uh, I'm here and the thanks I saw is there. But uh, Professor Nish Nishida thought about that there may be some previous dimension where you and the object you observe separate. And she called, he called it the pure experience. And I think you experience that in your daily life. When you are riding on the bicycle, you experience for a moment that you and the bicycle is one. And I, I think that experience is frequently happens. And that's what uh, uh, Dr. Nishida called pure experience. And uh, Professor uh, Nonaka, who introduced the anecdote of the bread maker, uh, he explained that uh, the engineer you know, mimicked the movement of the bread master and she became one with the uh, uh, movement of the Meister and she got the knowledge of the bread making from the Meister. So there was no subject object separation. So you, you know that the context is shared without being separated to the subject and object. So you and me is no longer separate. So Ega sensei, yeah, Iba sensei called it the egoless. And an emergency or serendipity other innovation happens in those level, egoless or emergence or serendipity is not something I invent. It's, it's spontaneously come into being, or it's come from somewhere and visit you. So according to Professor Iba, 
uh, he, uh, he introduced the word uh, middle voice. And he called this uh, this kind of egoless emergence, egoless creation, is a phenomena of middle voice. And the professor Nonaka, I go even deeper. He called it context. Uh, he called it uh, a tacit understanding. He become even deeper. Uh, this is his book on published in 2008, Managing Flow. In this book, he referred to the Heidegger, philosopher Heidegger. And he, a quote from Heidegger. So a place to live in the past, present and the future at the same time. It's a space of innovation. Innovation happens in a space, in a place that the past, present, and the future happens all together. And the same kind of thing that Professor Nishida said. And he also said that there's a space that the past and future and present appear at the same time. This is kind of a philosophical uh, uh, abstract uh, remarks, but I think we actually experience that in our daily life. So, so, so there's a movie capture those moment when I was 13 years old. Uh, this is a, a movie a Ghost, uh, maybe too old. I watched this movie when I was 13 years old, Hollywood movie. So. So the deceased, your lover, uh, appear right now in the present. And another movie, Coco. This is a Disney movie. So this is a movie about a, 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 you know, a character going to this world and the next world. And the deceased one come to this world and uh, interact with the living one. But uh, this is a kind of uh, phenomena a lot of people in the world captured in their life and expressed. So I think the space that the present, past, and the future happened all together actually happening in our experience. And this is uh, Koya, Mount Koya, where Kukai opened his temple. And uh, in the Koya Mountain Temple, uh, 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 monks and the priests believe that Kukai actually lives with us right now. But we experience that he's here with us. And I think a lot of people share the same experience. And uh, esoteric Shingon, uh, uh, Shingonist Buddhism use mandara. So this is a tool we use in our uh, prayer or meditation. And this picture, Mandara picture, is about simultaneous appearance of past, present, and future. So it's also connected me to the space. Innovation happens in the space, past, present, and future appear at the same time. That's. And uh, going back to Professor Iba's uh, talk, when he mentioned about the meditation, he referred to as a uh, uh, my 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 master Yamashita, and uh, it's uh, happening uh, at the same time, past, present, and future. And Reverend Yamashita. And Nagai Hitoshi and uh, Mr. Reverend Isho Fujita wrote the book. Yamashita Sunset is Blue Sky. And Nagai said it's I. And then 
That means that living life, past, present, and the future at the same time. And then there is another exp uh, explanation about the same thing. And then, how you can relate this past, present, and future to the creation? And then this is one example. A singer, Hikaru Utada, and she sang in her song, Fast Love. The lyric is of this first love is just after finish the first love or in the beginning. And it it is really big that it's like cycling the time. And in this uh, song, it seems like there is a old lady singing about when she was young or the young lady in the present. So it's really hard to tell. So this is like, if for example, uh, this is a good example that uh, everything like a past, present, and the future exists at the same time. And this uh, star is creating something like that. And also the another example is like Vladimir Nabkov from Russia said that this is the, like the integration of past, present, and future. It's like a, a just like a cook, I said. And Nav Navakov said that there is something else is adding. It's like a third element, which is like a genius's inspiration is added to this concept of um, so the Shingon Mikyo esoteric Buddhism in its mandara, it presents the time, the past, present and future are existing at the same time. So this is like a consciousness, conscious level. And in the middle, intermediate dimension. And uh, the bottom, the deepest part, that there is an emptiness. Or Nishida said eternal now. That's where there is a past and present and future exist at the same time. And Nonaka said that the ex explicit knowledge is here. And deeper part, there is a tacit knowledge. And there is something very similar. And uh, Shingo aesthetic Buddhist. Buddhism that what happened during our meditation, we did the moon meditation. This is the size, the small one in the consciousness level. And then we enlarge the moon means that you're getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Just like a mystery. Eva's explanation as ego is in this state. So when the moon is the biggest size of the moon that you imagine, that's where you are the smallest. That's the state of the egoless, small, uh, uh, close to the egoless state. And it's to say that the, there is a language 
on this level. And potential language, as I translated, it, it's the state or level that there is something we cannot explain, we cannot put in words. It's the state of uh, tacit knowledge level. There is in the context that there are something that you cannot explain or express. That's potential language. This is Mr. Izutsu's explanation. And Buddhism, in Buddhism, that our goal is uh, leaving the, the world of language because emptiness or eternal it, emptiness is the state of nothing. The nothingness means that there, there is no world or there is no language. But here, by Mr. Izutsu's state here, prepotential language in the state of emptiness, there is still some sort of uh, world. Language, there is language before language. So um, there is a emptiness, it's not articulate, nothing, emptiness. And then it just said that Shingon Buddhist preaches an articulate articulation. What is it? And he is it continues explaining. It's taught that touches the world doesn't exist. A Jewish aesthetic and Shingo aesthetic. So it's to say that this is the, the creation of the world. There's no universe. And then the, if there is no universe, the God was thinking whether they should create the world or not. We are living on this earth in the world. And then nobody can explain, experience that emptiness of the world, right? It's just the imagination because it's directly related to our death. Somebody maybe have a, a kind of a death experience. And, but for most of the, us, death, death is something that we cannot exp, experience and you cannot think of it. So the thought is where only God can experience. So probably the world that you can imagine that as if it's we're, we're like a canon or God. So that's where very close to the state that we're very close to the emptiness. So the creation of the world, that the total of the world creation equals, there is a border between life and, and then it's really vague and it's really faint. And then it's, we never, because we cannot express this. So resonance of this is something we cannot consciously aware. But at the bottom of the world, you know, there may be some experience that you get in touch with death. Sorry for the complicated story. So why I brought this uh, complicated story today is uh, Fumiya Yamamoto, uh, who is a flower arrangement uh, master, master. 
talked about、uh, Iba Sensei, listen to Iba, hear, heard Iba San's lecture, and、uh, Mr. Yamamoto wrote about that. He's a master of the, master of the flower arrangement. And Yamamoto san wrote, I can hear what flower says. So let me introduce this、uh, with you. So he, talked, he was talking about a, a book about the、uh, Kong, Edward Kong, how flowers think. The movement of various beings, including human, are conscious as symbolic、uh, processes. And each other self, each other's, ah, each other's self. So I kind of this overlap with this picture for me. So it's the deepest part of the world. So the symbol, the word,、uh, c o m e out from the deepest part of the universe. And so language before language, c a n n o come into language. So Yamamoto san called it symbol. And he called it the、uh, uh, process of the symbol. So, in the process of a symbolic process, and each other, each other self a p p e a r in the semiotic process. This idea o v e r l a p with、uh, Dr. Iba's idea. So, first、uh, deeper level, and a little bit、uh, a shallower, it's a pure experience. And a little bit shallower,、uh, come to the surface, you express as I. So, according based on this, the idea of the process, he said, I can hear the voice or speech of the flower. In esoteric、uh, Shingon Buddhism, According to the Shingon Buddhism, it developed from pre potential language to potential language and to language. And、uh, Yamamoto san said,、uh, flower, voice of the flower. You know, actually,、uh, flower doesn't speak, so we don't hear their voice. But in the nature, there is a, a Voice of the flower, sound of the flower at the level of egolessness. And、uh, I think the underneath the voice of the flower, I think there is a language before language. It's not living, it's not death, death, it's a kind of、uh, uh, emerging. A why between living and death. And、uh, Yamamoto san tweet, and、uh, Yamamoto san's kudo, kodo, the flower arrangement is not to decorate a place, but to touch death. That's what he t w e e t I think that、uh, at that very, very deep level, living and death. This may be just my interpretation,、uh, but I felt some resonance there.、うん、so that's about it.、えー、I think we、uh, come, to, come to the time to end. So, egoless creation may be rooted in listening to a faint echo in a place where there is no dis distinction between existent life and no,、uh, no nothingness, death. This is out of logic. This is beyond logic. And、uh, you can't experience it through the logic. And、uh, so you cannot make it as a knowledge. Only way you can get it is learn from your master, teacher. And,、uh, you know, in Buddhism, when you reach the deeper level of nothingness, that the ku, nothingness, you know, people experience、uh, uh, really peace. But that not maybe so. 
西田北斗先生、ウォークステップバイステップ、ワイルドリッピングブラッドオンザグラウンド。え、アナザーフィロソファー、シューズを釘セット、ビルドアンリーフインザフラジャイルテンポラリーハットオンザデプスオブナシング
cannot help talking something. So. Uh, you want to say something? Please write down in the chat room. Uh, well, instead of the uh, breakout, we can open uh, this room to everyone. And then there are so many uh, relationship and then so many different relationship with uh, new people and you're so happy to hear the similar minded um, people uh, the later practice neopragmatism and the Fusao I've been uh, researching the Fuso and uh, philosophical studies, and it's related to the topic that you are here today. And in moon meditation, when I was doing that, you know, I cannot concentrate because my kids are running around. And there are a couple of things that I noticed. When I was had a breathing, when I I used to be in the band and I was a vocal and I was uh, doing some uh, kind of practice, singing and uh, relationship with with my body and the ground. That is the memory came back. So using your body different from the uh, usual kind of uh, way of using a uh, body. It was when I was talking about the, uh, the actors on the stage and you, how they use the, uh, the body, the physical body. And the latter half of the meditation that enlarging the move that I realized the egoless creation or the pure experience is banishing, how banishing the, uh, the border between myself and the others is in the ecological meme form, I was thinking about to talk about it, but you know, the time was limited. I did not talk about it so much. And I was gonna show this kind of research that how it can uh, vanishing the, uh, the border. If you say that banish the butter, it's like having it inside of you is like better. And everybody knows that, you know, there is something much bigger than yourself. So it was that without paying attention to your intention that you feel the kind of intention of yourself in the relationship with yourself and the other outer world. So I want to try this meditation one more time in uh, when it's quiet. And there was a symposium in Taiwan about Haruki Murakami, the author. And there is a new slide I, I added. Um, the cabinet, oh, there is a uh, subconsciousness in the drawer, the cabinet. And there is a detail or structure in it. It's coming naturally out from the closet because we have so many things in our subconsciousness. And then 
below two stories and there is an exit if you find exit going down to the below two the in order to do that you have to face the kind of fear for experience like as if you are dying and that is when the uh, imagination is really important the kawaii haya or the philosopher have, have some kind of similar idea it's the subconsciousness uh connected all of our subconsciousness were uh, connected and Kai Hayao was talking about meditation. The emptiness, the meditation is about all the, the emotion or dark mind or all the kind of things that you have to ignore them. And in order to penetrate that kind of fear or dark mind, and then when you go through it, that there is a story, the pure, and you will meet the others in the deepest part. And in the forum that I had no time to talk about this kind of area, but in the subconsciousness area, and then going deeper and deeper, and then we can talk about more about the connection underneath of our consciousness. I'm also very interested in the mandala because in the middle, there is emptiness and then around the neura in the middle and then the functions are uh, there are some functions walking around the neura and then so in the middle is the goal or the target that everybody's uh heading for because this is the kind of structure and then these shapes in not just mandara but also the uh, our label making all these uh, shapes or just naturally coming making making this kind of shape that heading to the middle to the center So the mandala is a very good expression that what I'm normally doing in the lab or this research. So, so the center is emptiness or ku, nothing less. And the surroundings are heading to the center. And this structure is going to be a very good topic that I would like to continue talking about. So I feel so grateful to the people like Kawashima-san or Yamamoto-san that we have a very similar view or the direction. So I think this gathering is superb and fantastic. <laughs> and um, the moon meditation that Kawashima-san gave us the direction like a few years ago, but today, when I feel like enlarge, by enlarging the moon, that there is no much water of ourselves and others, sort of surroundings. And when I focus on yourself, that there is a time that 
uh, pay attention to ourselves in the room. That's when I felt something very mystic and magical. So as the moon it was getting bigger, um, you don't think about where I am. So in this large moon, when I, you realize that how so small I, uh, I was, and there was no border that I was like part of the moon. And that was a, a kind of a wonderful feeling remaining in my body. Actually, the question came, when you pray for the mandala, what is the intention that we should have? Okay, uh, I will go back to the question. So let me say, you know, what uh, Kobayashi pointed out right now is, uh, I like to say thank you to uh, Iba-san. Uh, I want to speak a lot with Iba-san, but we don't have three or four more hours. So let's create that kind of opportunity. Yeah, well, let's do that. Uh, what Kobayashi pointed out is something I made a mistake in my uh, leading of meditation. I said, uh, uh, kind of uh, conscious about yourself, then people return to the previous level. So that was a misinstruction on my part. But uh, uh, what you say right now, when you become selfless, selfless, egoless, there's nothing. You know, important part of the Buddhism is going to exist together. Our uh, self and selfness is uh, side by side. And that part is Kobayasan now uh, uh, presented that. That's a very important point. Yeah. Murak you mentioned about Haruki Murakamani, the second story of the uh, base. And uh, Murakami said it's a uh, 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 dripping blood and walking, and that uh, there's no peace there. There's a peace, but it's also blood shedding and dripping. And that's Haruki Murakami said that is a, a source of the creation. And uh, uh, life is you know, every morning life comes out and fly. Every morning it dies and they come back and fly. And uh, I felt some kind of connection uh, between them. Yeah, when we create something, we write something. You know, it's like a moon. What we create is a moon. And uh, we May, may move the moon to us while well, we move us to the moon. I become the uh, article I am writing. So that's became one world. So I, I, people ask me how we can become a, a sentences. I don't know, but I express like that. I see sentences as uh, like uh, looking at mirror, mirrors. Murakami Haruki said, you know, you know, I read his uh, uh, essay and about the creation. He get up at uh, 5 a.m. every morning and they write the uh, same pages of article. So he's so disciplined. So that kind of regulation discipline is very important because it's numb your body and it may become into the body. I think that's the same kind of kind of process of you do in the meditation. So I think that's kind of creative meditation is uh, possible. And uh, when you sit in front of the, the piano, you become a creative mode. When you uh, sit in front of a flower, you know, I think that's kind of a switching mode come from the body. And a uh, uh, long time ago, I had a difficulty to shift my mode. Once I got that the sense of switching the mode, I can now do it clearly, uh, really easily. 
And uh, before I get that, that was very important. I complain about a lot of environmental uh, uh, tools. But once I got the shift mode, it's easy. Yeah, keep doing that. Uh, repetition is very important. Hoshino said that you remember the uh, mountain monk, Hoshino, Mr. Hoshino. You know, we had uh, another occasion to talk with him uh, outside our ecological meeting. And uh, Hoshino san and uh, martial artist uh, had a discussion. And also uh, another monk, Fujita Isho san. And we are talking about the kata, the uh, shape. Uh, more, uh, you know, you the martial art has a move, you know, they have a shape of move. And uh, we don't know why we repeatedly doing the move, same move again and again. And one day you get something. And the Kashima san said that he did this uh, meditation a thousand times. And I think that there may be some space that you can reach only by repetition by your body. So I would like to ask uh, Fumiya-san to uh, uh, invite his comment. Kashima-san mentioned about the uh, quote uh, about the death and uh, there is a some synchronicity was happening. Thank you. Uh, do you have any comment or like to pick up a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I, indeed I have to go. And uh, I wanted I'm to thank you very much for the wonderful uh, meditation and the, and the lecture. It was a really, really beautiful experience to feel so connected with this, the emptiness of the moon and the space around me and then feel it all contract inside me again it, it really intense experience it was it was really wonderful and it's also really wonderful to see uh, science and spirituality merge together and see that all these current perspectives and old perspectives from ancient wisdom are still moving towards the same center somehow which is uh, which is wonderful to be on the journey together with all of you thank you very much everybody wow Thank you so much. I Let's forward. keep on journey together. Yes, I look forward to seeing you. you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coming back to uh, Yamamoto Fumiya-san. Uh, thank you very much, Kawashima-san, to quote my tweet. <laughs> And uh, Iba Sensei, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I am not a student of uh, philosophy, and uh, I don't know what to say right now. But uh, what I said about the flower, usually people say, express, uh, flower is beautiful, flower is pretty. And I feel some. Um, no, what we do is actually killing flower, right? When we cut the flower to put that in the vase, flower dies. So we say that uh, make flower live, but actually we are killing them. And if you use these scissors, what well, this kind of knife. Well, we have other uh, tools, uh, brutal tools. This is a kind of uh, murderous tool, same as a, a tool that can be used in murdering people. So when I arrange flower, I am constantly facing the death of the flower. So when the flower, once it's open, it's going to the death. So the uh, flavor or a smell of the flower, fla fragrance of the flower, maybe the fragrance are going to the death. So that's how I confront flower. So in Japanese, we say, uh, make flower live, ikeru, but actually we are killing flower. And the fragrance of flower is a fragrance of death. That's what I wanted to tweet. 
us expressing that way. So, ikeru in Japanese uh, have a meaning of giving life. So we say ikeru hana means giving life to flower, but we actually once kill a flower. So it's a, a kind of contradictory actions uh, to the word. So I don't know whether this experience is a uh, same as a uh, uh, be, um, a why between death and dies or uh, but that's put me to the uh, uh, eternal uh, rondo of the death and uh, living. And uh, thank you very much for great meditation. Yeah, great. I have never thought about that. Yeah, flower arrangement is actually killing flower. That was kind of surprising for me, a new word for me. I am growing vegetable in my garden, and uh, we uh, I have a, a pleasure of eating it. But we, we cut the harvest uh, uh, cucumber, and it's died, and we eat that. So we are living right now, heading for death. And that's maybe uh, going back to Kawashima-san's story. So death and living is uh, both sides of the hands. You know, we may have a longer time than flower, but we are ahead, heading to death. So that's death that is uh, the confronting death is always underneath. I'd like to give a, get a comment from kashima san about, so there may be some kind of territory, uh, not death, not living, or territory uh, before language. That kind of territory uh, it's not included in the uh, normal articulation of a language because we articulate. So we once need to give up a language and the open your body to the senses. I, I believe. ギロンというか考え方としてそのまま大切にしているところってあると思うんですけどまあある意味そのフィールの重要性ってでもそこにあえて言葉以前の言葉っていうものをある意味こうなんかそれってどういうことですかまあ新語認証とかでもそうなの
vibration. Uh, exactly, that's exactly what it is just said that uh, there is the kind of chaotic state that we think of uh, that receiving something it, through like a shamanic way. Actually, Eva Sensei was pointed out last time in the forum. That's the kind of state. Uh, Christopher Alexander was talking about deep feeling. That's uh, not a surface, but there is something that human beings, all of us, a sharing is called deep feeling. And I'm uh, trying to translate it and then convey the message, the meaning through my uh, study. And then there is a deep kind of a knowledge or something even deeper than that. And that's the kind of feeling that I see, think that, that we are talking about today. And then Yamamoto-san and Kashima-san, you two are talking about death. And then I don't normally talk about death. And if you are asked that there is a kind of feeling of death to me, when I was listening to you, that creation of the uh, nothingness, but I was listening to you and I started to realize uh, because uh, thinking about the dementia or the people have a disease that I personally uh, had an experience that I, you know, when I have had it, was painted like a three years ago that I have a near, near death experience. But to me, the death of the flower is something very inspirational. I'm not talking about, I, I'm not thinking about the death of the people, but the, uh, I, uh, me and my artworks, the relationship is like life and death. When I completed my artwork, that's the end of the lifetime. I mean, the end of the creation. So I'm facing the creation is probably similar to how Yamamoto-san is dealing with the flowers. So I, when I was thinking about the death, it's about the life, like a, the death of the of human beings or animals or the plants. But to me, the relationship with the artwork, that my artwork, my works and myself, I can finally relate to the death for myself, for my case, in my case. So I'm so grateful that that was a great, quite in inspirational. I, for me, the death is a theme. I think about death more than life. So when I go to the mountains to get my flowers. So I bring the bell for to protect from the bears. I saw bears and the animals, wild animals. So before a flower, but uh, I'm facing the kind of threat by the wild animals. I go into the mountain the threat to by the myself by the death and then get the flower and then get the life of the flower. So I to me the death is something that are unknown. Every day I chant and meditate every day after day and after day. And then 
Chang, Chang, I get bored. I do this uh, actually, like Japanese actually too, every day. And I get, I never get bored. And because I'm doing something to try to find out something unknown. So when you do uh, your artwork, like a flower ceremony kind of thing, is something that you're trying to find something you don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, I I I exactly. Sometimes. Well, how, why we, why I dare to flower arrange by sacrifice that much. But I may end up articulate that uh, uh, later. Jiro Kawakita. He also said uh, that is actually that the state that creation happens. You know, nobody told you to create something, but you end up doing that. You are used to do it. It's a real kind of impulse, you know, uh, uh, absolute uh, receptionism of the impulse. And when I write books, you know, writing books is really, really unhealthy because sitting uh, so much hours in front of the monitors. When I, I was uh, at, uh, preparing dissertation and I was listening to the same song, Mr. Children's song 50 times a day. So, so I kept it doing the same thing in the great moment of creation. And I, you go to the mountain and you put yourself in the danger. You know, I really understand that sense in my creation too. It's, go, it's beyond uh, what does it mean to other people or a social service. It's about, I can hear the song, I can hear the sound and I have to move, something like that, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah, I have to do it. Yeah. It's not even fun. I can really understand that here, my Miyazaki Hayao's feeling. Every time he finished his animation, he said, I want to retire, but to do their next movie again. And it's really tiring, but it's there is some kind of deeper, deeper joy there. So you uh, be, just become the, it's not just a being a slave, enslaved by the creation, but there's just some joy. Yes. In a way that uh, you are willing to sacrifice your uh, body or health. It's maybe very masculine side, I think. I really want to hear other people's, uh, how other people feel about this. But sorry about that, we all uh, times uh, Still 40 people are with us. Thank you very much, everyone. I think uh, all of you will have something to say. So I'm wondering if it's better to have a break at room. And uh, we need to think about the time. Uh, some people may just want to uh, listen to without going to the breakout room. So how do you think? If there is not much of people who wants to speak, I uh, say something, and uh, we don't need to send you to the breakout room. Or if there is a many people who wants to express or share, uh, uh, I will send you to the breakout room. So what do you want to do? You know, 
what do you want to do? You keep want to keep listening three people, three guests talk, or what do you want? あれかな。顔出していただいている方と話しするんだったら、あのこの場でもいいかなっていう気がするんですけど。these are limited number of people's face showing right now. Other people are not on the video. So we can set up a breakout room, but the ones we send you to the breakout room, uh, maybe. So we can invite people. So we have uh, Mats Baba-san here who lives in uh, Berlin right now. He's an artist and uh, he is teaching. And uh, it's just Toshihiko and the Kukai. You know, he's a visual artist, but uh, that is something with real interest. Thank you very much. Yeah, I really enjoyed. All my keywords is uh, my favorite words. I don't know where to eat, where to eat. In the meditation, I got one idea. You know, I or self. You know, we Japanese word G. So G, same character is used to describe nature. I was wondering what does one word mean? So I, I, I started drawing a painting and I love road drawing. So, so it's uh, Toshihiko Izutsu and uh, Jung's uh, uh, architecture structure of uh, uh, consciousness. Usually people uh, make the picture of mountain and it's easy for people to uh, imagine that but sorry, my camera is not working. I think that maybe it's not a, a mountain, it's about the internal structure. It's a, a mountain inside, you know. This is my, so mountain is uh, uh, heading for inside. And that is a self, that is a consciousness, conscious self we hear. And we are connected outside with uh, nothingness. So nothingness is uh, outside. And uh, it uh, can be darkness and it's also everything. That's, I think that's the proper uh, structure, structure representation of the consciousness. So G, you know, we separate us from them, from that, then we become I. Thinking from that, the word shizen, the, it's also used the uh, same G, kanji, Japanese kanji describe uh, we use uh, when we say about ourselves. So. <laughs> the other thing I noticed is uh, I love kukai. And sorry about uh, calling uh, myself fan because it's me. You know, my, my best star as an artist is Kukai. My mother is a calligrapher. And uh, it's always come up to my uh, artwork. And uh, my mother's side, the uh, family crest is, uh, has to do with Koya-san. So, I'm not, uh, I, my religion is not uh, uh, esoteric single, <laughs> but he's my, I visited the Koya mountain and I experienced uh, Ajikan. I love Koya-san, Mount Koya, and just like I love pyramid. This is uh, 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 in the, I bought this uh, token in the Koya-san, in Koya-san, where Musashi Yamamoto hide himself, hit himself. And it's like a kind of, uh, you know, I draw that and uh, each token has a different character. And uh, my token was love. I'm, I'm in the Nuremberg, in the residence. 
in the Nuremberg, and I keep it with myself. You know, uh, I got it in Mount Koya. This, this is a kind of pine. It's uh, the pine that the Kukai decided to build. It's a um, temple. And I, I, I got it in Nuremberg, Germany. So it's really uh, miraculous. And yeah, actually, a few people are joining from Germany. Kashima san, do you want to say something? Sorry, can you hear me? The microphone? Uh, probably Miki san or Igarashi san. I see your faces, so if you would like to say something, uh, I appreciate if you say something about today's event. Thank you so much today. I was looking forward to it so much. And uh, during the meditation, there was a phone call and I missed uh, the best part today. But uh, uh, lecture was fantastic, and then Yamamoto san and Iba san, and especially the uh, the death of the flower, and we see the state of receiving. These are all the stories are impressive. I feel like when I look back my life, I got the feeling that I have received something and it's really hard to explain what it was. But uh, Iba-san expressed something. I resonated when I have faced seen, uh, the kind of situation uh, and I have experienced that I, I receive the whole like situation and I want to keep thinking and uh, feeling that what I experienced and then I learned today. Um, Someone has a message. Uh, you don't need to show your face, but if you can say something, just uh, voice is okay. Uh, can I say something? Thank you. I'm attending from France. But creation. I'm a musician and I'm uh, taking the course of singer writing, song writing and singing. And when I create something like John Lennon, there is something the voice of the heart and I don't have that kind of passion. And I was listening to today's lecture. Um, I was, I enjoy in creating something on the surface, but creating something that you cannot choose, but you have to, and with us kind of painful, with the pain. So I always felt like John Lennon, for example, that creating something with, uh, uh, with so much pain. He's artist creating from the uh, nothingness 
the people tend to be quite vulnerable. So when in, they are in the process of creation that you cannot feel the happiness or joy, something I have been experiencing. So of course, in the end, the, there is a state that of fulfillment or achievement, but during the process that I resonated, the kind of the state of the pain or of the creation today. The music is also interesting. I cannot create the music, but I can write lyrics. So I was like sort of a singer songwriter. So when I wrote the music, I I said everything I wanted to say, and then I could not write the, the second line. line um, and then not academic, but I was uh, doing the, some kind of research and study about the music. And then some people writing wonderful uh, music. The, the English is not my mother language. So I, I was doing in Japanese, but the creation of the like a J-pop singers, creating wonderful music. Is when I still think about the music, it's very, very physical practice. When I you kind of grasp the kind of sense of the feeling, the emotion, and then mix with the rhythm, rhythm creates something very, very emotional. And then not just the feeling through the language that we learn from the books or textbooks, but the before language kind of feeling, there is a crossing of the state. I love J-pop. Like uh, they are talking about some daily lives, but there is something that more or deeper the language before language state. So I was, I enjoy listening to your comment about the music. Uh, there are some comments that uh, people resonate what Sendasan was talking about through the music, the fragile uh, vulnerability, this size that Sendasan was talking about. We can't stop talking. Uh, keep talking. So uh, the time is we're getting late. That so I'd like to Kawashima-san uh, as in order to close our session. I have an announcement before closing our session tonight. Uh, here I show the screen, this journey will continue in a different ways. So at where's hashtag or if you're in, impressed by some uh, uh, today's forum, if you can put a uh, hashtag EMF21 or Hawaii Gambling, uh, if you want to write something like an article in your uh, social media, please share. Or if you can think of your friends around you that you will be, will be interested in this uh, journey. Please invite. And also, the Facebook group, Facebook group can, is available that you can join. Anybody can join. So please go ahead and join us. 
and Mr. Eva's uh, presentation or archives are available. So if you can, if you are interested in, please purchase the archives. And we're gonna continue our gathering like this. And if you want to uh, suggest any kind of themes, we wait for your uh, request. In the next gathering, we haven't set up yet, but uh, we may talk about the bio design or bio, bio art. Uh, complexity in kind of those mixture of those themes. So if you have any theme you want to focus on the diving, please let us know. And uh, each one of us uh, have some uh, topic uh, uh, other people wants to hear about. So we're going to do that at the global context. Kashima san, uh, would you like to say the closing word? Yeah, thank you very much, everybody, to spend such a long time with us. Just like Kobe san said right now, I actually wanted to hear from you more. Because, uh, what I said today is really specific and uh, a little bit uh, uh, unfamiliar world, and uh, I'm so happy that uh, people are interested in that. I wrote a master thesis about this, uh, uh, and uh, but that didn't get a, a high evaluation. People said it's a stupid to think about that. But here, I said the same thing, and uh, people really uh, interested in and uh, enjoy that. I'm so happy. So this is not easy talk, coup, emptiness, or death. But I think they are important to talk about. At the, at the last slide, I said, how to interact, how to relate to death and emptiness, to invite the sound of the heaven or and I think it's very important. And that, that kind of movement, uh, I want that to be popular in Japan. And uh, thank you very much for walking that path with us. Thank you. Uh, also, interpreters, thank you very much. This is a difficult to talk to translator. <laughs> Kashima-san, thank you very much. Just like he said, uh, uh, translation of those kind of topic at the same time, uh, not easy. Julia san, Yumi san, thank you very much. Please uh, approach to them, send approach to them. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, finally, we like to close tonight. Everyone, uh, Professor Iba, Miki-san, and uh, Kashima-san, and Baba-san, and the other people, thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to uh, send walk to another journey with you. Uh, if you're willing, please uh, unmute your microphone and say goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.